Hi, this is Josh from Breezy Bellows and today we are going to compare an acoustic accordion with a digital accordion and we are going to look at this in detail and I am going to share my thoughts on what I like better about acoustic accordions with respect to certain aspects and in other aspects I think that the digital accordion offers something that the acoustic accordion cannot. Spoiler alert, there will be a lot of things that the digital accordion can do that an acoustic accordion cannot. And that is because the digital accordion does a lot of these things using the software and the acoustic needs to implement all of that using mechanics. And that puts a lot of limitations on the acoustic accordion. And before we jump right in, I just want to mention that this is not a video in which I'm going to be taking sides towards an acoustic or a digital. I play both these accordions regularly. I, I play both digital and acoustic several times a week. And uh, this is just my thoughts on what I like about acoustic and what I like about digital. At first, we are going to look at things that I think the acoustic accordion does better. For this demonstration, I have with me my Petosa Artista Pro XT. I love this accordion. It's made out of maple. It looks fantastic and it also plays really good. And this has been the accordion that I've been taking with me for all the competitions I've been to because I feel good control when I play this accordion because of its great ergonomics and the read response. So the first topic we're going to look at is out-of-box sound quality. An acoustic accordion like this comes with various options for sound settings. You can use these register switches to choose which voice you want. This one, for example, has 12 voices. Compared to a digital accordion, whatever out-of-box sound that the accordion has, has been configured pretty well. So you can expect these sounds to sound good and you don't really have to adjust any settings in order to make it sound good. So let me play something on this accordion and then let me play the same thing on a digital accordion and let's compare that and then I'll share my thoughts on it. So I can pick any of these switches and uh, I have like limited options and most of these options sound good. So if I want to go for like a stronger sound, I can go for a bandonium or organ or harmonium or master. So if I want something that is a little bit weaker or cleaner, I can go for my band bassoon or I could go for my clarinet or this beautiful dry tuned violin or if I want something in the middle I can go for this false new set which is my two middles and a high. 
So there are limited number of options, but it's not too confusing and you can actually get a good sound out of it without uh, adjusting any of the settings. On the other hand, when it comes to the digital accordion, you have almost an unlimited number of options. But out of the box, when you just take a digital accordion, turn it on, hit the master switch and play, it doesn't sound too good. As you can see, it uh, is not a very convincing acoustic accordion sound. And that is because there are too many options, too many knobs and too many parameters that can be adjusted to change the sound a lot. In order to get a good sound out of it, you have to understand what each parameter does. And on top of that, you need to first understand what sound you like. And uh, so when you play an acoustic accordion, you had nothing to do with that, right? The factory has like fine-tuned the accordion uh, to get a certain sound out of it. And that is the actual instrument. And this is something that is trying to emulate it. So uh, for somebody that is not very hands-on with respect to digital programming, it is hard to get a good sound out of this and it's not going to sound natural and that is one of the main reasons that a digital accordion has a bad reputation amongst accordion players because uh, if, if you just get a digital accordion and switch it on and play it like an acoustic accordion the sound that actually comes out of it is not going to be very attractive and there are some user program groups that are available for purchase from advanced players that know their way around programming these sounds. And those can be purchased and they can be copied over to the instrument. <laughs> So what you think sounds better or not is completely up to you. It's a subjective opinion and it's perfectly possible that you actually like the out of the box sound better than this one. But uh, it, it, it just shows that there are so many options and if you don't 
exploit all those options to get the sound that you want from the instrument, you're not putting your accordion to full use. So with respect to the out of the box sound quality, I think the acoustic accordion definitely has an advantage over the digital accordion. You could just put the accordion on and then play with the available sound options instead of worrying about adjusting a lot of parameters. The second topic that we are going to look at is bellows control and expression. And for bellows control and expression, I still think that the acoustic accordion edges out the digital accordion. Although I couldn't say that it is a clear winner, there are a lot of things about bellows control and uh, there are some aspects that both digital and acoustic do well. There are some aspects that are only possible on the acoustic and not at all possible on the digital. So let's look at this in detail. So we know that the bellows is what powers the accordion sound. So in a acoustic accordion, when you open and close the bellows, air is forced out of the reeds. So the sound is produced through airflow. Whereas in the digital accordion, there are no reeds. So you are gonna be using a pressure sensor. So the mechanism to produce a sound is a little different. So the action of the bellows is going to feel very, very different. The digital accordion does give you options to like control bellows resistance. You can see that I'm barely using any bellows, but if I adjust this knob to the other extreme, the bellows will be using more air. So now you'll be able to see my bellows open faster. The purpose of the bellows is not only to produce the sound, but also control the dynamics and expression of the sound. The bellows are not just an on-off switch, but they are completely analog, right? So I could play the tone very, very softly by working on the bellows very softly. And then I could do it louder, or I could gradually play any volume in between the, those two extremes. And as a fun fact, this is something that you cannot do on a piano. Once you hit the piano, the volume that you get slowly decays or damps out, but there's no way to like do a crescendo on a note without releasing that note. So this thing that you can do on an accordion is not possible on a piano. So if a piano player is bullying you, you could challenge him or her to do this. So this is something that you can do both on an acoustic accordion and a digital accordion, and I don't really think one is better than the other with respect to controlling the, these expressions, but the bellows motion on the acoustic accordion feels a little more natural because that is how an accordion works, right? It's not trying to imitate something else. But whereas the mechanism on the digital accordion is completely different, so if you're expecting the bellows to feel exactly like an acoustic accordion, you will be disappointed. But that being said, uh, why should it? It, it, it? As long as it's able to provide you good control over your dynamics, and I, I do feel that it does a fantastic job of that. It, the bellows on a digital accordion and acoustic accordion feel completely different. And I prefer the way that the bellows play on the acoustic accordion because I feel that uh, the airflow is something that enhances us to like connect with the notes, whereas the pressure sensor is a little bit different. But uh, I think it's trivial and also up to personal preference. Uh, maybe you like the pressure sensor based dynamics better. But what really distinguishes the two is that uh, with the digital accordion, it does feel like you're working a little harder on the bellows compared to what you do on the acoustic accordion. Topic number three, which once again is something that I'm gonna give it to the acoustic accordion or the digital accordion is bellow shake. Bellow shake is a technique in which you rapidly play 
notes in quick succession without actually releasing not like that releasing and playing the notes uh, one after the other but you actually change the direction of the bellows in rapid succession in order to do the bellows shake and I've been playing this instrument for a little over three years now and I should say that the bellows shake is nearly impossible to do on this digital accordion which is the Bugari Evo which is very comparable to the Roland fr 8 x I've spoken to several people who play both these accordions and everybody agrees that it's nearly impossible to do a bellow shake on these instruments. And there is one exception though, there is the older model Roland called the FR7X that is the accordion, the only digital accordion in which you'll be able to do a bellow shake although it's gonna be not as easy as you do it on an acoustic accordion. The FR, in the FR7X, it's possible, but on these ones, it's, uh, it, it, I don't think it's worth the attempt to actually try to do a bellow shake on this, because I did speak to like uh, some very, very skilled and renowned accordion players that have played the digital accordion and uh, they told me that they go for workarounds like uh, setting a delay and getting the notes to ricochet uh, using the delay to like simulate the effect of a bellow shake but I don't think they are able to do the bellow shake so let, let's see uh, how my attempt at a bellow shake sounds on this one <laughs> choppy and if I just keep doing that it's gonna uh, mess my shoulders up so I'm gonna just increase uh, the reverb and delay to see if I could make the sound any better yeah uh, not, not very convincing and it's super hard to control and uh, definitely not something uh, that I like doing on the accordion and that's one thing that I don't like about this. Like whenever I perform out with this one and uh, I won't be playing the songs that have a bellow shake part in it or I'll be leaving that part out and changing it out to a simplified version. So let's have a look at this on the acoustic accordion and see how it works out. <laughs> acoustic accordions are the same. Uh, I'm able to do a bellow shake a little bit better on this one compared to like most of the other accordions that I have. It has to do with reed response and the compression on the bellows and the ergonomics of the instrument itself. If the instrument gets like too bulky it's harder to do the bellow shake and if the response on the reeds are not good let's say it takes a little bit longer for the sounds to start on the reeds you won't be able to do your bellow shake well and also the compression of the bellows itself also plays a role and uh, I, I, I do think that with respect to being able to do a bellow shake there is no question the acoustic accordion definitely wins. The fourth topic that we are going to be looking at is the number of available options from brands, models, size, colors, shapes and all of that. Acoustic accordions have way more number of manufacturers and models than digital accordions. So for digital accordions, the most famous maker is Roland. The Roland FR1X is the smallest offering from Roland. And I guess it's a 25 key compact accordion, really good for the price, very versatile for its size as well. And uh, it, it, it is definitely more versatile than any acoustic accordion in its size. And then the next size up is the FR4X, which you can compare to any 37 key acoustic accordion. And the next size up is the FR8X, or some of the older generations of that, which compares to like a standard full size accordion. And uh, the Bugari Evo uses the FR8X platform, although it doesn't have uh, uh, as many number of choices with respect to like size and other models. It, it just comes with like one model, We've been talking about the Proxima digital accordion that was supposed to come out, I guess, three years ago. 
And I think there are some other models made by music tech and others that are not as popular. They also have a lot of offerings that do like the MIDI in the acoustic, uh, which is like a hybrid option. I'm not gonna talk about that in this video. So with respect to digital, the number of options is like very, very limited. But for acoustic, we have like, uh, like tens of manufacturers who make accordions in like different sizes and shapes and different types of reeds. So with respect to that, the acoustic accordion has like a wide spectrum of purchase options. And there's also a sizable pre-owned market in which you could buy used accordions for a cheaper price. So with this wide variety of options, you could buy an accordion for a really cheap price versus a really, really expensive accordion. So the price options are also very wide when it comes to the acoustic accordion. For example, it is possible to get like a decent acoustic accordion pre-owned for like 300 bucks that is not possible for a digital accordion. If you, if you wanna go for a FR1X, even if you go for a pre-owned option, I don't think you'll be able to get one for anything less than a thousand bucks. If you get extremely lucky, you could get one for a thousand bucks. And the full size FR, ATEX, and Bugari Evo are $5,000 and up. I'd still say they offer a lot of value for that money but you don't have that flexibility to buy a really cheap digital accordion. With respect to purchase options, I think the acoustic accordion again comes out on top. Topic number five that we're gonna look at is the ease of picking up an accordion and playing. Let's say you have this accordion and you just wanna pick it up and practice. For the acoustic accordion, you don't have to worry about anything. It's always ready to play. For a digital accordion, since it's battery operated, you have to make sure that you remember to charge the accordion and you will only be able to play it for a certain duration. So if uh, you're, you're playing it out loud with the onboard speakers, the digital accordion has like a life of up to four hours and you won't be able to play more than that. That shouldn't really matter for most of us. I don't think we're gonna be playing an accordion for more than four hours straight. But a lot of us might forget to charge our batteries and that makes a big impact in how much we'll be able to play the accordion. I should also say that even if you forget to charge the batteries in your accordion, you could use the power adapter and plug it in and play the accordion but then you have to stay close to a power outlet and that is another additional restriction that the acoustic accordion does not have. So far we've looked at five things that I think the acoustic accordion has an advantage over the digital accordion and I think that is all of the topics that I could think of that an acoustic accordion could do better than a digital accordion. Now we're gonna move over to topics at which I think the digital accordion is better than the acoustic accordion. And we do have a lot of those. So let's start with all of the topics in which the digital accordion performs much better than the acoustic accordion. Number one is the ability to practice quietly without disturbing anybody that lives with you. The digital accordion has the option to plug your headphone into it and turn off the speakers. That the accordion is not gonna make any noise at all and because of this option your roommate or spouse or kids whoever that lives with you or even your neighbors are gonna thank you. I can actually practice like this. Yeah, that is actually a huge advantage that the digital accordion possesses over the acoustic accordion. Number two is the ability to record the sound of your accordion without bothering about any noise that comes from the outside. The output jack on a digital accordion lets you connect 
your accordion to a audio interface and the sound from your accordion gets complete isolation from any of your external noises. You can get a clean recording without worrying about any of the external noises and this comes standard with a digital accordion. In order to get this in an acoustic accordion, you have to go for the option of installing internal microphones and you'd be able to isolate the external noises, but that is something extra and you cannot expect to have that in all acoustic accordions. Number three is the number of different wet tuning options that this accordion has. When you buy an acoustic accordion, you can only choose a fixed amount of wetness in the tuning that you get. You can either go for two middle reeds that are tuned dry or wet, depending on your taste, or you could even go for three middle reeds in which they are tuned asymmetrically with like one middle reed in the middle and then the other one detuned from that at like a dry reed and the other one detuned from that with a lot of wetness in it. So that would give you a lot of options, but that doesn't even compare to the number of wet sound options that a digital accordion provides, which is almost unlimited. If you want to learn more about this topic, you could check out the other video I made in my channel where I talk about what wet tuning is and whether you need it. Let me demonstrate some of the wet tuning options that are available in the digital accordion. This is a dry tuned option. So if you want something that's a little more wet, you could go for something like this. If you want it to be even more wetter, you could still keep going. So I'll never buy an accordion that has that wet a sound, but since I have the digital accordion, I still have the option to choose a really, really wet sound if I need it for just like one part of a song. And having all of these different sound options is not making my accordion any bigger. For example, if I want to have an accordion that has both the dry tuned sound and the wet tuned sound in it, you usually go for like a five treble reed block accordion and that's gonna make the accordion a lot more thicker but this one has like a really compact body because all of this is done digitally and you don't really need to have an extra read block to do this. And it not only has a lot of different options with respect to the detuning of the wet sound, but it also has a lot of different options with respect to the type of reads. And that opens up a lot of possibilities. And number five is the availability of orchestral sounds. This is something that is not part of an acoustic accordion unless you have like a MIDI installation on the accordion. So this really makes the digital accordion sound very, very versatile. And for some weird reason, this has actually been a topic of controversy amongst accordion players where they think that playing a digital sound on an accordion uh, is not something that an accordion player should do. I don't really understand why. Like if, if, if somebody likes to play it and if there are people that like to listen to it, I don't really see why not. But uh, I, I do see like a lot of comments of people commenting like that is not an accordion. And uh, some of these comments are like in a very, very angry tone. And uh, I only get a laugh when I see comments like that. 
because it, it is a musical instrument. It provides you a lot of options. And if you like making music with it, why not? There are digital versions of like a lot of other instruments. We have like keyboards uh, that have been doing that for a lot more years than this. So I don't really understand what the pushback is. But the availability of the digital sounds does really make this accordion super powerful, especially on the bass side. all these orchestral sound options this is as good as any synthesizer you can use all of these options to configure your own sound settings that suits each of your sounds number six is the chin switches so you can see these switches that are available on a digital accordion these are not available in all sizes so these are available on the full size Bugari Evo or the Roland FR8X. I don't remember if the FR4X has it, uh, and the FR1X obviously does not have that. Chin switches could also be available in very high-end acoustic accordions. I don't think anything that is priced under, say, 15 grand would usually have something like that. So in acoustic accordions, usually what you can do is set each of these three or four available chin switches and sometimes you can go for more if you're going for like a super customized accordion to select one of these sounds that you have here so let's say i use master violin organ and say bassoon as my most commonly used switches on the acoustic accordion the master is already available on my palm master switch and i could configure these three out of the factory so that each of these three would switch to one of bassoon violin or organ and uh, with that being said there are some models in which these chin switches are actually adjustable where you can actually uh, twist it to make it go for any of the settings that you want but that is it but on a digital accordion these chin switches offer a lot of functionality because they can be configured to select any of the possible sounds that you want. If you put all of your sound settings in a user program list, you can set the uh, chin switch in a way that whatever sound that you selected for section A of a song uh, is what you start with, and you could just keep hitting the switch to go to the next sections. And there doesn't have to be any limit 
on the number of sounds that you can select for this and this makes this infinitely more configurable and on top of that the chin switch could also be used to control things like pitch bend or like adding effects like a pedal while playing a piano and that is something that makes this chin switch uh, a lot more powerful than what you have in your acoustic accordion. And number seven is the availability of touch sensitivity on both the keyboard side and on the bass button side. Traditionally, accordions control their volume using how hard you work the bellows, but the digital accordion has the option of configuring touch sensitivity controls so that you could also use this to make the sounds go louder or softer. So right now I don't have any touch sensitivity here. So it doesn't matter how hard I hit it, it's only the bellows that control the sound. So if I go into the sound settings and change the touch sensitivity to high, watch what happens. I'm gonna start hitting the keys harder and harder and that's gonna increase the volume. I'm keeping the bellows motion constant is something that can actually let us independently control the dynamics on the bass and treble side. For example, I could have uh, one of the sounds that uses bellows for the touch sensitivity. I could layer the sounds in a way that one of the sounds is not set up with any touch sensitive controls and the second sound is set with touch sensitive controls and I can actually make sure that uh, I can play the volumes for these two independently and this would require uh, a lot of practice to get this right and you'll have to have like great amount of control to be able to control this and I have not tried this a lot but this offers you a lot of functionality and same way you could do that for bass and treble you can keep your bass controlled by touch sensitivity and the treble controlled by bellows so uh, it, it lets you control the different sounds that you have on your accordion uh, in different ways and uh, that is something that an acoustic accordion does not have. And number eight is the availability of percussion sounds on the bass side. I should say that a lot of times when people use percussion on the bass side I'm not a big fan of it because they play it exactly the way that they play an accordion. Something like this. It becomes too predictable and uh, sometimes it sounds so monotonous and it doesn't sound so good but you could actually do a lot of different bass patterns with this and it starts to sound really good. availability of free bass. This is by far the biggest advantage that a digital accordion has over an acoustic accordion. Usually if you want to pack in a free bass system into an acoustic accordion you have to go for the converter option which makes the accordion very very bulky. Look at this picture for example in which I have a digital accordion that has free bass system and also an acoustic accordion that has a free bass converter. Compare the thickness and you should see that the digital accordion is much more compact. And on top of that, the digital accordion comes with several different free bass systems inside of it. And the acoustic accordion only has one of those systems on top of the standard Stradella system. And I don't even think it's possible to create an acoustic accordion with all of the free bass options that a digital accordion has. As my teacher John Atoli mentions, this digital accordion or any Roland, for example, has about $100,000 worth of free bass instruments inside of it. And uh, I completely agree with it. You have a chromatic B system, a C system, and then you have the quint converter system. And then you can, uh, you, you have like a lot of options. Let me look that up. 
So you have the C system, the P system, and then the Quint system, and then there's also a North European system, a Finnish system, a Belgian system, another Belgian system, something called as the crop stop system. And all of these are available in one instrument, and that is phenomenal. Combining orchestral sounds with free bass elevates this accordion to a whole new level. Let me play something for you. So that is just fantastic and anybody that owns a digital accordion you should all, you should know that you already have a free bass converter in it a lot of the people that own digital accordion don't even realize that and when they when they talk about uh, learning to play a free bass, they'll be like, okay, I need to find an instrument that has free bass in it. If you have a Roland FR1X, 4X, 8X, 7X, whatever it be, or a Bugatti Evo, you already have a free bass converter in it. You don't have one free bass converter in it, you have seven different types of free bass systems in it, and that is just fantastic. And this is one clear advantage that a digital accordion has over the MIDI accordion, which is like a hybrid of a digital and uh, an acoustic accordion in which you install a MIDI system in an accordion that has real reads. So that cannot have a free bass system without having a free bass converter in it as well. So uh, I don't own one of that, but that's what my guess is. And uh, if, if somebody owns one and if you have the free bass option in your MIDI, just let me know, but from what I know, you don't have that option. And the dimensions of the instrument in which you have a free bass converter is something that uh, you'd have to like defy the law of physics to make an acoustic accordion with this dimensions to have both stradella and free bass in it on top of all the other tuning options of wetness and all the orchestral sounds. Number nine, is reeds going out of tune. That is something that can happen in an acoustic accordion because everything is mechanical. And an acoustic accordion has 448 reeds. These are like independent reeds that are in there to make the accordion have like all these different sound options with four sets of reeds on the left, right hand for treble and five sets of reeds on the left hand for a standard 120 bass accordion. If you're having free bass, you're gonna have more number of reads. Remember that, that's 448 reads. And each of that those reads needs to have voicing and tuning done independently. And even if one of those goes wrong, which is a very fair likelihood if you own the accordion for uh, a long time, then it needs to be fixed and it's not trivial. And on top of that, each of those reads have reed leathers that are glued in, they can curl and they can uh, result in a lot of problems that require expensive maintenance. And the digital accordion does not have any of that because all of this is electronic. And obviously something can go wrong with the electronics, but that's a completely different matter. And it, it's not the regular hassle of having to deal with accordion repairs. With respect to the digital accordion, the main thing that you need to worry about is the battery life and getting a replacement battery. Uh, some people just buy a replacement battery and have that as a backup, but the amount of maintenance work that you need to have on a digital accordion is usually very less compared to that of an acoustic accordion. One known issue that I've seen on Roland's is the charging adapter pin breaking off I did face that once with my older FR3X accordion, 
but uh, that is an annoying issue to face. But uh, other than that, you don't have like any of uh, the tuning issues to worry about. And number 10 is portability and taking your accordion around. The digital accordion also needs to be taken care of because it's a fragile, delicate instrument, but you don't have to worry about leaving it in your car on days that are relatively hotter. You don't want to expose this to extreme heat uh, just like any other electronics, but this digital accordion can be safely stored anywhere that your laptop or cell phone can be stored. And uh, an acoustic accordion is something that you can never put in the trunk of your car. Even on days that are only 80, 85 degrees outside, if you park your car in the sun and if you don't have your air conditioner running, your car can easily get over 100 degrees hot. And forget about days in which the outside temperature is over 100 degrees, your car is gonna be baking hot. And that is no place to store an acoustic accordion because the acoustic accordion has reed blocks that have wax that holds the reeds in place. And if you're gonna store your accordion in a place that's getting over 115 degrees or something an hour hot, the reed is gonna fall off the reed block because the wax is gonna melt and you're looking at an expensive repair. And on top of that, you will have an accordion that you won't be able to play. Let's say you're going for a gig and you left your accordion in the trunk. And if the reeds fell off the reed block, then that's not a place that you want to be in. And number 11 is the availability of user program groups and the option of copying the sound settings from one accordion to another. Imagine that you have a favorite accordion player that plays the digital accordion and they're performing using a particular sound. It's possible to just copy over those sound settings into your accordion and get the exact same sound out of it. Obviously, there are gonna be differences with respect to the player's abilities and techniques, but the sound program that they use could be copied over from one accordion to another. This is not so easy with an acoustic accordion. You, you could get an accordion made with the exact same specifications, but uh, it's much harder to like copy over sounds from one accordion to another in an acoustic setting, but it's so easy on a digital accordion. That's why we have a lot of commercially available user program groups that could be purchased from Richard Noel, who has the biggest such library that is available for purchase and it's very popular and it's highly recommended by multiple digital accordion players. Michael Bridge also has UPGs that are available for sale. These UPGs are not as large as the number of options that Richard Noel provides, but these are focusing more on cinematic sounds and classical music, and I really enjoy both of these user programs. But in the end, you wanna get your hands dirty, get into the system, and try to program it yourself to try and understand the capabilities of your accordion so that you could get the appropriate sounds that best fit your songs. And if you're interested in learning more about programming your accordion, a great resource is greatideas.com. The great is spelled as G-R and the letter eight, greatideas.com. That is operated by my accordion teacher, Joe Natoli, and that is a community of digital accordionists that share resources and also has a lot of workshops that will help you understand your digital accordion better and it will help you sound better. Definitely check it out. We do have a Facebook group for great ideas as well, which is free. You could join the Facebook group and ask questions, but the great ideas membership does have an annual membership fee. And I would strongly recommend anyone to sign up for great ideas if you have a digital accordion because it does provide you a lot of resources and about five to ten workshops every year in which members have a discounted price. As I mentioned before, this video was not made to claim that one of these two, the digital and the accordion, acoustic accordion, are better. Both are different instruments with different capabilities and I love both of them. But I should say that the digital accordion packs a lot of options for the price at which it is available. 
and the acoustic accordion that I just played actually costs more than twice the price of this one uh, because it's a high-end instrument it's a fantastic instrument but it does one thing really really well but this thing can do a thousand different things and I have several acoustic accordions and just one digital accordion for the exact same reason when you have one digital accordion you don't need one more because it's gonna take care of all of it but when you buy an acoustic accordion you will be buying a bunch of different ones because they all have different sounds different dimensions and uh, they have a lot of different qualities so I do think that both these are fantastic options and if you are in the crossroads uh, finding it hard to decide which one you want to buy. I hope this video was useful uh, in explaining some of my perspective that could help you choose one of the two. Or ideally, you can buy one acoustic accordion and a digital accordion so that you could experience both. Thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to subscribe and tune in to more of my videos about the accordion. I will be posting tutorials, my own practice experiences, performances, and also informative videos on the accordion. Until the next video, have a great day.